What's going on everybody? It's Wade with Swamp Donkey Archery. So have you ever heard anybody mention timing or cam timing when it comes to a compound bow? Well, if you ever heard it mentioned and you've always wondered, what are they talking about? Y'all stick around, I'm about to teach you. All right, how you folks doing today? Hope everybody's doing good. So I'm back in the shop today and I'm wanting to go over cam timing when we're talking about a compound bow. Now this for some of my uh, more seasoned folks out there that, that know about archery, this is probably going to be a mundane video for you, but stick around. You might still learn a little something out of here. So when it comes to cam timing, what people call cam timing, some people get cam timing and tuning mixed up. So we'll cover tuning on another day. Today I specifically want to talk about cam timing. And when we're talking about timing, what I'm meaning is on your bow, these are called cams. They're connected together with two cables and a string. So when you're dealing with cam timing, we are talking about utilizing these two cables right here to correct any uh, issues in cam timing. So with this, a compound bow is basically a simple machine. It is designed to perform a task. The task of propelling an arrow forward and transferring its energy into propelling the arrow forward. So as with any machine, machines have to be in time and in sequence to perform at the best of their ability. Can a bow be shot if the cams are out of time? Yep. Is it going to shoot okay? You can get them to where they shoot okay but they perform at their best ability when the cams are indeed what they call in time. So on some bows, like this diamond here, I want to say, yeah. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it in, in here or not, but there are these little, little dots on the cam right there. Uh, these are timing marks. <clears throat> and as long as your cables run through or close to where those timing marks that's a good spot to start does it necessarily mean that if it's running in the exact same spot on this cam as it is this cam that they're 100 percent in time might not but it's a good place to start now some of the other bows that's out there they may not have the little spots on the uh on the cam there may be like a, a hole machined in the cam or something like that, that that you can use as a reference to get it close but to check your actual cam timing, we're going to have to go over here to the draw board and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, when it comes to checking the actual timing on a bow, um, it, it helps to have some type of draw board. Uh, you can get an idea whether they're in time or not with somebody drawing and looking at it and whatnot, but that's... that's to get an idea to see if it's way off, but to really check where it's at, and I'm going to see if we can do it this way and show you all what I'm talking about. So, I use this draw board from Last Chance Archery, which is mounted on my Last Chance press. So, you'll take a hook of some sort, put on your string, and you're going to draw it back. You'll see the cams rotate. And what you're looking for is. This is stay. I think this is stay. All right. So what you're looking for is on this bottom cam right here. You can see how this stop on the cam has hit this cable right here. So this one has hit the stop. And if you look at this one on top right here, you can see it's a good bit off right there. So that means the timing is off on this. And usually what happens on bows that are uh, 
been used for a little while, had several shots put in them. Um, most of the time, your cables, what you call creep. There's creep and there's stretch. Most of the people out there use the term stretch. So most people know what you're talking about when they say that my cables are stretched. Uh, stretch usually refers to something that has stretched and then returns back to where it's supposed to. Creep means it was where it was supposed to be and it got longer and it will not return. So when we're talking about strings and cables on bows, we refer to that as creep. Okay. So what that means in bows that's been shot for a little while, one of your cables has creep or crep just a little bit. So most times whenever you have one cam that's hitting before the other, you can, you can adjust for cam timing by either tightening a string, uh, tightening a cable or loosening a cable. Do that by adding twist or taking away twist. For most of the ones that I've seen and I've heard, uh, a gentleman refer to it this way that strings and cables never get shorter. They only creep. They only get longer. Now, if it is a new set of strings and cables that is sent to you or that you're installing, um, I have seen builders build them just a little on the short side to take into account for any creep or anything that may actually take place. So you may install a brand new set of strings and cables and one of them might be a little longer or shorter, cam timing might be off. And you correct that by looking at the spec of your bow. You look at your axle to axle, you look at your brace height, and you can kind of get basically get your bow back in spec by either tightening or loosening twist on your cables or on your string. But that's a video for another day. I just want y'all to be aware of that. The, but for simplicity's sake, today what we're doing is the scenario that we have, have a bow come in. I think my bow's out of, out of tune, out of time. So we're going to fix that issue. So you saw on this bow, bottom cam was hitting. Top cam hasn't quite hit yet. So we're going to put this thing in the press. I'm going to show you what I do to fix it. Okay, so in this instance, this cam is hitting first, which means if I'm looking at this right, the, the cable that is tied to the, to this cam has stretched, which has made it, so you can see a little bit of slack, which has made it roll a little further around than where it's supposed to be. So in order for us to get, to get it back to where this one is, we need to shorten this cable to pull this cam back a little bit to equal where this one is. So this one being a split bus, there's two different ways that you could uh, twist this cable. You can pull the bottom of it off where it goes on the cam and you can add a couple of twists down here or you can come to the other end of it and we can add a couple up here. But I'm looking at the amount of twists I already have in these yokes up here. So I'm going to choose to pull the cable off and add twists to this part of the cable rather than to the yoke. Now I could also do just the opposite on the upper end i could take away twists out of here and get this the top cam to where it is it retarded i guess a little more to where it hits earlier but i think this one is where it needs to be timed at and this is the one that has the cable has stretched so we need to add a twist back to it and I need my I need my little pick so there's all kind of cool tools that you can put in the shop to help you out and these little picks if you don't have one comes in really handy so I'm gonna pull this cable off and we're gonna add We're going to add about two twists to this. So you have to look at what direction your string is twisted and make sure that you actually add twists to it or you're just uh, compounding the problem. Compound. How's that for an for a oxymoron there? All right. And then we have to get our cable landed back on the peg 
always pay attention to how the cable was routed. Some just uh, mount straight onto the peg. Some have different um, pegs that you have to go around to get it back on the cam. So always pay attention to how the cable is routed on the cam. Because if you don't, it'll, and you put it on wrong, it'll cause you, uh, cause you some problems. It'll cause a derailment or worst case scenario, it could, uh, could break your string, break your cable, and that wouldn't be good. So, all right, here we go. Anytime you put a bow in the press, always double check everything where all your cables and strings are routed. Make sure they're all in the proper spots. Now, this is something that requires a press to do. So this is one of those things that if you don't have a press, it would require you to take it, take it to an archery shop of some sort and just to make sure that it gets done correctly. If you do have a press at home, you can do it this way. Please, for the love of God, don't try to put a ratchet strap or something like that on these things to press the, a temporary press. That is just not a good scenario. So I'm going to make sure everything is good on this one more again, and then I'm gonna put it back up on the uh, drawboard and we're gonna make sure that that took care of the problem. Okay, so I think we got that situation resolved. We have it back in the draw board. We're going to draw it back. And we'll get down here. We're going to watch that cam. Okay, so we'll get it back watching this cam as we draw back and you can see the stop right there it hits the cable see it right there and we're on the top and let's see if I can get some light on there right there so we are hitting at the same time and that tells me that we have resolved the issue so I'm going to set this back. Oh, we're going to go back over here. Y'all stick with me. Okay, so that tells me we have resolved the issue. And, oh, all right, there we go. I'm through jerking you around now. So that's how to time and tune or time a, a, a compound bow. Um, it can get a little tricky when you have different yoke systems, different cables and stuff like that. So I do recommend if you don't feel comfortable doing this taking it to a pro shop of some sort um, for somebody that's a certified bow technician in order to work on that because um, you can get those cams so far out of sync that you'll never be able to get it to shoot right but yeah so that's what we mean when we're talking about cam timing and uh, how to adjust for it basically it's are the cams are the cams starting and ending at the same time when you're cycling through the uh, shot process? So anyhow, hope that was informative. Um, Y'all got any questions? Hit me in the comments down there. There are a few things in there I didn't cover because I didn't want to get super uh, super detailed, super deep into what it was. I just wanted to to kind of do a normal scenario on a normal style bow coming in the shop. So anyhow. Um, Y'all make sure that uh, look me up on my uh, webpage, swampdonkeyarchery.com. Uh, got all my contact info there. And uh, shoot me a message, give me a phone call, whatever you need. Um, as always, if there's stuff that uh, stuff that you need <clears throat> that I could order, get in, send to you, whatever, I'm happy to do all that. Uh, guess that's about it. Now I really got to get to work. As a matter of fact, that bow that we just set, timing on I got to build new strings for I just wanted to do that because I knew that the uh, strings were out of time on that <laughs> so it was easy one for me to go through and take care of for you so anyhow I guess that's it y'all be sure and uh, like this video hadn't already done it sub to my channel please helps me out a whole lot and uh, other than that 
I guess I'll catch y'all on the next one. Y'all have a good one.